This is Sandeep Anand with Sand Compounding. Uh, Phil Fisher was a great American legendary investor who had gone ahead and created a lot of wealth by identifying the growth stocks. He didn't even stop there, but he went on to write all his ideas in a book called Common Stocks and Uncommon Profits, which was uh, which is considered to be one of the first initial books to be read when someone is serious into getting into investing. He has recently created a template for growth stocks, identifying growth companies in its early or mid stages and riding the whole growth through the cycle. Uh, Phil Fisher uh, had created the Fisher Investments advisory firms and uh, his son Ken Fisher is right now running the Fisher Investments. Uh, Ken Fisher also is an astute investor and here are some uh, investing wisdom from the Fisher Investments group. Take a look. Almost always and almost everywhere people get this wrong. They tend to prefer to own stocks from their own country in America, the biggest and broadest stock market in the world, most diverse, but also in small countries. The fact is that when you think of broad categories of equity, the very long returns, 30-year returns of them tend to be almost identical, if not identical, to other broad categories of equity if the categories are calculated correctly. There's a lot of incorrect ways to calculate equity returns, but calculated correctly in the long term they get real similar because in the long term, as I wrote about in my Only Three Questions book, shifts in supply seven, eight, ten years from now are much more important in determining pricing than shifts in demand and can overwhelm any change in demand. Demand fluctuates in the short term based on human emotion, supply can be increased or decreased nearly infinitely to overwhelm any perception of superiority in category. And so if you look at U.S. versus foreign and you go back close to forever, they go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth of U.S. doing better than foreign for a few years, foreign doing better than U.S. for a few years. Right down the middle is the totality of global, since the world is a little more than half U.S. equities in money value. And what that means is you really get a smoother ride to that long-term equity return if you don't focus on your local home country bias and instead invest globally, diversify globally, aim at the world market. In some periods, you'll do worse than the American market, or if you're French, the French market, or if you're Japanese, the Japanese market, and sometimes for a long time. But in the end, it comes back to being the same. And if you're in one that underperformed for a long time, global helps you. If you're in one that outperformed for a long time, it's not too long before if you're just in that country, you're going to have a disappointing time. Think globally. Invest globally. It really gets you to the equity return in the long term in the smoothest path. That's a tough one because basically... Not being calm is a function of your emotions. And almost always, whether it's about volatility or other things in the marketplace, your emotions are your enemy, not your friend. The, the, the way I've always kind of thought about this is sort of like thinking about a battlefield general of a long time ago, maybe in the Civil War, the night before going into battle. If, in fact, you have to stay up all night worrying about the battle and thinking about the battle and being nervous about the battle and being afraid of what might happen in the battle, then you don't sleep enough and the next day in the battle you're not as good as you should be and you're not peak performance. The best thing to do with volatility is to focus on more real things. Markets bounce around for any reason or no reason all the time. 2% is what the market calls Tuesday. Uh, I said that in my uh, 2006 Only Three Questions book. But in reality, for the market to move 10% in three weeks uh, like it has in the last few weeks is pretty normal. It's not abnormal, and it bounces back just as fast when that happens. Exactly when? I don't know, and there is no way to know. That's part of the problem. But then what people do is they don't want to believe that. They want to believe there's a fundamental real reason that drives the volatility, and in fact, there isn't. Markets bounce around. They're volatile. You knew they were volatile. So what you do is you focus on real things and you remember that if you liked things before, 
after downside volatility, they're cheaper, they're better. Rationally, you should think they're more favorable than they were before, and you should look toward the real things and not focus on the short-term noise and think about what your long-term objectives are and how you accomplish those. The best way to stay calm is to focus on the long-term and ignore the short-term.